Industrial Talk is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks. You've heard me talk about my friends at Palo Alto Networks. Zero Trust OT Security, delivering a comprehensive security solution for all OT assets, networks, and remote operations. But did you know that the Palo Alto Network solution provides over 1,100 app IDs for OT protocols, over 500 profiles for critical OT assets, and over 650 OT-specific threat signatures? Now that's best-in-class security delivered. Learn more about Palo Alto Network's Zero Trust OT security solutions and how you can achieve 351% ROI over five years. Learn more about the Palo Alto Network solution by going out to paloaltonetworks.com. That's paloaltonetworks.com. Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat. Grab your work boots and let's go. All right, once again, welcome to Industrial Talk and welcome to the platform that celebrates industry professionals all around the world. That's you. You are bold, brave, you dare greatly, you innovate, you are changing lives and therefore you are changing the world. Thank you very much for what you are doing. That's why we celebrate you on Industrial Talk. We are broadcasting from SMRP's 31st annual conference here in Orlando. And it is a collection of problem solvers. It is a collection of individuals that are passionate about asset management, reliability, and of course, maintenance, and everything in between. They're right here, right now. You need to go out to smrp.org. Go out to smrp.org. Be part of the solution. Get engaged. And, and, and if you're not here this time and around, be here next year. 32, I can do the math. And then you get to meet people like Tara, who happen to be very late. <laughs> and now we're, now, we're, now we're rightfully through this particular conversation because we need to make it go. No, 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 no. I am late, Scott. Yeah, I, I no. am, but I, I am you. so glad to be here. I am glad that I made it. And I'll tell you why I'm late. I was I was talking. <laughs> Again, she didn't take my first nut. It's like, I don't care. <laughs> you say you don't care. Okay. But maybe your listeners it will better care. better be dazzling. So, um, well, it's actually not that good. But so I was, I was talking with a customer. I was talking with um, one of our partners, and it's actually a really good lead-in because I wanted to um, I wanted to talk with you, Sky, about um, the importance of aligning an organization. Um, you know, today um, business is happening, and especially our industrial um, yeah. operations and our industrial yeah. partners all over the world, and companies are buying each other and they're merging and. Um, or they're growing, um, and it's very important when when that happens to develop a sense of you know a unity, a culture um, across all of these different operations we talk across these about different that all sites. The time. How do we do that? Well, it's. I mean, it is. It's 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 intentional oh. and it's difficult. Um, just thinking about this particular organization. Um, they have over, you know, 50 sites across the world. They probably have that many CMMS. Some sites don't have CMMS. No way. They also have, you know, all that different learning management systems, you know, that comes with acquisitions. And yeah, yeah. So, so people are, have different training systems, right? And when you think about how important the, the operations are and how important reliability is to the operations, you want everybody to be speaking the same language of reliability. Yeah. Now, it may not be the same. It might be French, it might be German, it might be Spanish, um, uh, Japanese, but, uh, and English. Um, but, but having that, um, that vernacular um, That to consistent be lexicon. Correct. Um, a, across an organization is very powerful, right? And, and then everybody has a similar understanding of how important maintenance planning and scheduling of story management you know and that there are these best practices and that that they're all the same um, they might be tweaked you know for this or that for a different need for a different operation but that the basic standard work you know is understood and is the same the KPIs are different depending on what maturity level you are but that there's a similar ground like a foundation right so 
how we um, how we are trying uh, to, to do that is, um, and I didn't even say what I do. So no, we, you, you just went right into it. You're like on a Briggs and Stratton motor. You just went. You know, man, start me up. I have no problem. I, yeah. I, I my startup. Well, just is, keep rolling. Is smooth. Don't don't interrupt. So just keep rolling. I'm. <clears throat> So I manage uh, with, I work with life cycle engineering and um, I have for 15 years, which is kind of crazy. Um, if you told me I'd be at a company for 15 years, you I would started told you. at eight. I did. <laughs> You're sweet. Ah, you're um, welcome. But, but I have, I have definitely. The, why am I there? Because they keep giving me opportunities. So that's yeah. another little tidbit yeah. about yeah. you know um, importance of engagement. But um, but I manage intellectual property. So what we do, you know, is we sell our subject matter expertise, right? So what I do is I work with the subject matter experts. Um, and I distill that information and I productize it, whether that be an e-learning course, whether that be uh -huh. an in-person training. We've actually taken all of our processes, all of our understanding about these different disciplines, and we've put it into a toolkit online. And um, this particular organization that we're working with, they, are, they had so many different pers perspectives right on what's good maintenance on what's good you know what what constitutes um you know good what's a reliability engineer you know yeah, what do they yeah. do and how can we support them um and so we um we've introduced this system so the whole world that's in this organization all of their sites use the same playbook they use the same playbook and we translated it into different languages right so so they're getting the same education they're all level set with the same philosophy. And um, no matter what it is, you know, um, if it's, you know, the life cycle engineering smarter platform or if it's, um, no, these are, <clears throat> this is our asset management system framework, um, you know, and these are our, our guiding principles and, and this is, you know, how we are going to use Maximo across the organization or whatever it may be. Um, but to have that consistency um, is a very powerful thing. It's a very powerful thing. How, how, long, how, how long did it take for you to make that? that so, I mean, that's not, it, you didn't flip a switch. Mm, no, no, no. And well, translate it in from you know, English <laughs> to French. Well, it's over 400,000 words. Okay, so if you take the, just the system alone, if you take the, the e-learning courses um, that all have to be translated and then they have to look good on the screen. They have to you know? be all branded, right? Correct. And yeah. so um, for 400,000 words, it takes us about six to eight months to get the whole body of work translated and tested and put back into the online environment. Um, and it's not, it's an art and a science, right? Because hmm. There is the science to translation. You can't just translate something literally. So, for example, if somebody who didn't know industrial operations, um, they might translate stores to a grocery store right, instead right, of right. a storeroom. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. So you can't just you know you can't just put it you know put it up in a Google Translate. Right. You know, um, you need to have a human um, translation and someone that has the industrial context. So it's a very challenging. A very challenging project, um, but the returns, you know, have been phenomenal. Because what do you mean by returns? Well, I mean by like the acceptance. So when we talk about um, change, you uh -huh. know, and when we talk about what is the, I guess what are like the metrics of change? Um, and I was going to present about that. I tried to present about that here, but they didn't accept my presentation. So you know, <laughs> slap your hand as an over here. I'm trying to find who's the chocolate. No. Um, <laughs> so maybe next time. But there, but there are some metrics, you know, of of to to see if the changes that you want to implement are being effective. One of those um, is adoption. Are people using it? Are they executing the yeah. the work? How you've lined out how, that works how are you tracking that yes yeah, so I mean, well it makes sense right right um well you have to have mechanisms for it we use coaching cards um where the supervisors will go and observe you know um after implementation um 
very effective. Just to, but you also got to see like, well, if it's not being adopted, what 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 needs to be overcome? Maybe there's something wrong with the workflow that needs to be fixed, right. and it's just not it's not working effectively for the users right. or for the for the technicians. Another one is proficiency. So. Yeah. Are they good at it? Yeah. Um, and I didn't make these up. There's actually a brilliant organization. You, you You're not brilliant? I'm brilliant, but I didn't yes. make this up. Okay. Um, it's ProSci, and they are a change management um, research organization. Mm -hmm. And um, they publish every year, they publish like benchmarks uh -huh. um, for, uh, for change management research. And it's really the human side of change. It's really interesting. So ProSci.com, check them out. Um, but they write a lot of, about about um, adoption and proficiency as being two of two of a big indicator. So, are people coming to the morning meetings? Are they coming to the you know the pre um, the scheduling meeting? Uh -huh. um, and is operations involved? You know, so those are the kind of things you look for. But with what we've seen with this organization is that um, with the translations that we've seen a lot more people go into the system, complete the e-learnings, um, even if they are bilingual. So um, at the German sites, there's a lot of bilingual individuals. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, but to have it in the native language, it's, it's an ownership, right? You know, so it's right. very much theirs. Um, and uh, it can be used, um, you know, it just has more breadth. So there's almost 600 people using the system and and they're what, is that uh, your fan n n that's jordan he is an excellent photographer uh -huh. um he's from so he's raleigh <laughs> he's from raleigh and he's with he he did the pictures at smrp and he's just such a talent yeah. um so i hope he's here next year in orlando smrp is going to be in orlando again next year no, I mean. um so anyway 600 people across the world are all learning about maintenance and reliability best practices, learning about what we call the gold standards, which is a best practice work processes and how how um, proactive work you know should be done right uh, from identification to close out or you know how the storeroom should be run from how you do your cycle countings to um, okay okay you know, all that how, stuff how. How are you? <laughs> how long has it been in place? So, it's been the English version. Um, actually, we started off in 2019. Now, the body of knowledge, you know, has been is collected over 50 years and then yep. standardized, right? And so, and we we have it organized by work stream, so by area of discipline. And we, we launched it in 2019. It had a different name than it was called Atlas. Um, and some of our customers still are on the Atlas system, but now we call it the LC Smart Platform. And in this particular organization, they've had the English now for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and we're rolling it out to you know the other sites over time. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, a, it's a massive project. Yeah. Um, and, and, and how success? Yes, the, we, we are. We're seeing good. Yes, we're seeing improvements. We had to go. Um, there was actually some regulatory uh, issues, you know, that needed to be addressed um, at one of the sites. Uh, there are some problems, and through working with the system and and improving, you know, their performance. Um, they've been able to overcome that, right? So you know, when the when when the auditors or whatever come uh, in, I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I was in regulatory issues with training material. Like, oh like, no, 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 I, no, 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 that's no, no, where no. I was at. I'm going, what the no, heck no, no, is no, no, going no. on there? This is this was like no, 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 this, no, was, this, this is was their, outside in, yeah, right? This is, this yeah, is yeah, outside yeah, yeah, yeah. in. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and so they've been able to to overcome a lot of that by by showing um, the capabilities and then and then their competencies. Um, and for, so my background is in instructional design. Um, that's what I was doing for years with the Institute, was building courses with our subject matter experts. Um, and I'm a CMRP too. Of course. So. Why wouldn't you? I'm mean? legit. Um, but, um, where was I going with that? Oh, our, 
our learning, and and I'm 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 I demand this um, of any of our designs, and um, now I have a team of designers that does it with me. Um, but we make it practical. So you said how? How can you tell? Well, you can't if you have a training that's just like click next, click next, click next, and you're just reading the screen or you're listening right, to right. it because it's like the voiceover text is saying exactly what's on the slide. Right. I mean, you know, just kill me. But um, the way we design it is there is activity plans and action plans. A yeah. take it from the classroom, put it on the job and see what you can do. And that is where, that's where the behavior change of learning happens, is taking, getting it out of the box and into production. <laughs> so if you see people using the learning um, and changing their behavior uh, in the right way for the right reasons, then, I mean, then you are making a real big difference. You are making a big difference. I don't even know how to, I don't even have questions to ask you. <laughs> I mean, you pretty much covered everything. It's like, it's classic. <laughs> but you were able to do it. How do people get a hold of you? So um, they can come to lce.com, uh, but we also have lcemarketplace.com, um, and there you can uh, you can buy our e-learning from there. Or I'm on LinkedIn, so find me. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> you didn't tell me I needed to buckle in for this conversation. You were great. <laughs> uh, I just sort of sat back, and you were just absolutely wonderful. All right, we're going to have all the <laughs> contact information for Tara out in industrialtalk.com. Go out there. Reach All right. Out, cheers. Make it happen. All right. We're broadcasting from the 31st annual SMRP conference here in Orlando. Apparently, it's going to be here next year, right? Yes. That's, what's, that's what um, Sean Hewitt said. Okay. He's the boss. Well, there it is, man. <laughs> on, I, now that I know that, you need to be a part of uh, SMRP 32. Make it happen. Go out to smrp.org. Get engaged. Find out more about being a member. Become certified. If you are interested in this profession of asset management, maintenance, and reliability, and everything in between, go out to smrp.org. That is your first stop. Make it happen, Captain. All right, we're going to wrap it up on the other side. Thank you very much for joining. We will be right back. There you go. Thank you. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. Yes, sir. Uh, her name is Tara. Life Cycle Engineering is the organization, and she is absolutely spot on. In all of this just crazy wackiness that's happening out in the marketplace, how do you align your organizations to ensure that they operate as smooth as they possibly can? Reach out to Tara. Find out more. All her contact information is out on industrialtalk.com. And speaking of industrialtalk.com, that is a platform. A platform is dedicated to industrial content creators. You have a podcast, it needs to be featured on Industrial Talk. You have a blog, you have videos, feature it on Industrial Talk. It is it's it's it makes it easy for people to get that information. Expand your voice, your influence, your you know, your opportunities. Come to Industrial Talk. Find out more. Go. It says collaborate. Let's collaborate. Be bold, be brave. They're greatly. Hang out with Tara. Change the world. We're going to have another conversation coming from SMRP shortly, so stay tuned.